Nowhere to go, good defense by Gordon. Baker, pull up, jumper, got it. Certainly a good sign for the Dragons. A great sign for Maris Baker. She's had a rough couple games, has to get into her flow, and that's a great start for her tonight. Yeah, Maris Baker has really struggled to score the basketball the last few, like you said, as Latson again going to the basket, but coming up empty. Drexel on the run. Florida State gets back, and Baker will play it back outside. Good decision by Baker there. O'Neill probably a little too much arc on that pass. That gave Timpson plenty of time to come over and knock it out of bounds. Yeah, and Grace O'Neill, she's going to understand the size of this Seminoles team and understand that she may have to use her bounce pass a little bit more today. Mullen inbounding. Satman in the post. O'Neill, baseline, jumper, got it. Beautiful. Little pitch back to Grace O'Neill. Her feet were set. Great start for the Dragons here. Yeah, Maggie, we talked about it before the game all off air. They need a balanced scoring, contributions from everyone. And how about Brooke Mullen getting in the passing lane? Two on one if she hurries. Drops it off for O'Neill. Easy two. Great defense by Brooke Mullen. That's how she gets herself and her teammates going. And that's what's going to happen for Drexel Stay in this game today. Brooke Mullen. Her ninth steal on the year. As good as she's done offensively, she has been huge defensively for Drexel. Here's another steal off the deflection by Chloe Hodges. Great job by the Dragons. Get your hands in those passing lanes. Causing a few Florida State turnovers here in the early going. Six straight for Drexel. Hodges high post. Satman on the cut. The little scoop shot can't get the roll and hung up there on the rim. Tough bounce there for Satman. Beautiful move. Love that she went in strong with her left hand. Gordon the drive. Nice little shot by Omaria Gordon, the 5'4 junior from Bradenton, Florida. And Gordon's going to use her quickness to get by these Drexel guards. She got into the paint, able to square her shoulders and score. So that breaks a 6-0 run for the Dragons. Hodges looking for Mullen. Turn around. Around the rim and out. No good. Rebound by Alexis Tucker. That's a good shot for Brooke there. Kept the ball high, able to turn around and use her height to her advantage. Tucker dragged the pivot foot. Substitution for Florida State as Tucker will come out. Brianna Snoop Turnage, 6'1 sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, coming in for Drexel. Momo, LeClaire, and Jasmine Valentine coming in. And really for the Dragons, LeClaire and Valentine have been the top two reserves consistently all year for Drexel. Yeah, they've really been a great spark off the bench, and they just fill in exactly where the Dragons need it. Dragons holding on to the lead. Low scoring affair so far, right where the Dragons want it. Hodges to Mullen in the post. Hodges through traffic. Timpson got a piece of it. Ball being batted around, Valentine coming up with it. And jump ball, possession arrow will stay with Drexel. That was a nice play, but a good job by Timpson to come over for the block. Yeah, and we see what Coach Mallon is trying to do early. She's trying to exploit that mismatch. She's having Brooke Mullen screen down. Florida State is switching, and Mullen's going to hold her seal on that block. So Dragons are looking to take advantage of that. Amaya Bonner, the Cal Berkeley transfer into the game for Florida State. And Chloe Hodges off a great inbounds pass from Brooke Mullen. Great pass by Mullen. Hodges able to gather herself and finish strong. First bucket for Hodges. Deep three. No good for Bajetti. And a strong rebound from Valentine. That's a win for the Dragons on this end of the floor. Quick shot, quick rebound. Hodges had a mismatch for a moment, but now has to pass it back outside. Nice pump fake by LeClaire. Can't get the bounce, rebound, Hodges. Great follow by Hodges. It seems like this little spurt right here has been all Chloe Hodges. Dragons seem like they are really taking Florida State out of their game right now. You yep, see now they're back in this little zone. Yeah, and Florida State does not especially like to play in the half court. Like to get down the floor, score, score early and often. And Gordon, a nice job to get around the defender. And Amaria Gordon with four points. She averages 14 a game. Very solid player. And that's what we're going to see from the Seminoles this afternoon. Chloe Hodges, she tried to go for that little steal. She missed it. They're going to make you pay. Back to a four-point spread. Mullen 
through a screen. Now a nice little pick and roll with Hodges and there will be a foul on Florida State, no bucket. That's going to be on Bonner. Tough, I think Brooke Mullen there is like, oh, we don't want that foul <laughs> call, wide open layup. That's like throw the flag on the field, but keep the play going, <laughs> see if it results in a touchdown. Yeah, I hear you. A couple of substitutions for Florida State. Sakaya White coming in at the forward spot. Number 13, Carla Villegas, the shooter from Spain coming into the game as well for Florida State. Valentine misfired inside and a strong rebound from Turnage. That's a good look though, and Valentine's gonna have to keep taking that shot. Latson, no good, but she drew the foul and Latson remains scoreless, but she will go to the line for two when we return. But the Drexel Dragons got it going early on. They've got a 10-6 lead with 4.48 to play. You're watching Drexel Basketball from Learfield here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Still aren't using Giant Direct? What are you afraid of? I'm afraid they won't pick the produce like I would. We're specially trained to pick the freshest produce. I'm afraid the prices will be steep. You'll always get great prices, plus Giant's deals and rewards. I'm afraid the fees will be crazy high. There's no hidden delivery fees, and pickup is always free. I'm afraid of what I'll do with all the free time. Now that's scary. Have no fear with Giant Direct. Save big on snow crab clusters. $6.99 per pound with digital coupon. At Independence Blue Cross, we believe in doing more when it matters most. When you need a hand, we've got online tools that connect you to the strongest network of doctors and hospitals in the region. When you need a boost, we keep you going with health discounts and reimbursements. And when you need an adventure, we give you the confidence to live fully. It's a privilege to help you pursue your healthiest life and all the possibilities ahead. You can have live college sports in your hand this year with the brand new Varsity Network app. Hear live, play by play, and keep up with your favorite teams and audio broadcasts no matter where you are with this free new app. Be sure to download the Varsity Network app today. This March, you can listen to exclusive Westwood One coverage of the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments for free on the Varsity app. Powered by Learfield. Listen to every game at a truly unique listening experience. It's all free. Search NCAA Championships. When you vacation in Montgomery County, PA, your money worries get a vacation too. Oh, you gotta get your value. Feel free to explore the soldiers' huts. Free? <laughs> Four bucks, that's it? Keep the lettuce coming, Diane. <laughs> Woo, parking is free! Hey, it's free! With so many affordable things in Montgomery County, go ahead, freak out. <laughs> If you're ready to plan a winning tournament with a winning team, visit valleyforgesports.org. Welcome back here to Center City, Philadelphia, alongside Maggie McIntyre, Amari Bluestein, and Drexel with the early lead over the 22nd ranked Florida State Seminoles. And Maggie, you know, the good thing we like about the Dragons so far is that they are not playing scared. They are playing their game and they are controlling the tempo right now. Correct, and it's like, if you're the Dragons, what do you have to lose? Go at them. You know, I always say in these types of matchups, everyone brushes their teeth the same way. You put your uniform on the same way as them. So it doesn't matter. We're all playing the same sport, roll the ball out. Go at them hard. That's such a former player take. I, <laughs> I absolutely love that. Uh, Latson makes both, so she is finally in the scoring column. Started 0 for 2. Tania Latson, we talked about it. She had 26 against UCLA, averaging 18 a game. One of the top scorers in the country. LeClaire gets the first step. Whoa, and the rejection by Sakaya White, but you have to like the aggressiveness of Momo LeClaire. I was gonna say, I mean, I'm just happy she took that ball and she went hard. You get blocks, who cares? Out of bounds, set up a blob. Mullen to inbound, finds LeClaire. She goes in again. <laughs> there you go, that didn't deter her. First bucket for Momo LeClaire, averaging almost six points and four rebounds per game off the bench. So we're seeing this make-miss defense from the Dragons. They make a basket, they're in this matchup 2-3 zone. They miss, they're falling back in a man. 
So far, Drexel's done a good job not allowing Florida State inside. Latson kicks it to the corner, and that three is no good from Carla Villegas. LeClaire, running the point now. Grace O'Neill remains in the game. LeClaire around the screen, jumper. Somehow went down. Wow, that was quite the roll for Momo there, but we'll take it. Well, she has such a soft touch. I guess I'm not that surprised, <laughs> but just kind of got stuck, went out, and went right back in. That's a good play by Latson, fighting through traffic high off the glass for Sakaya White. Wow, great finish by White, high off the glass, like you said. Threw a little bit of contact there, but she earned that one. Sakaya White, the JUCO transfer from Jones College in Mississippi. LeClaire, another drive. Beautiful baseline drive. She beat her on the first step. Couple dribbles, beautiful finish. Latson gets past O'Neill going to be all day. She has a great first step. Grace O'Neill is a pretty solid defender. And we talked about it in the open, Maggie, that Tania Latson likes to drive inside. She's only 5 for 22 from beyond the arc this year. So she likes to drive, and she loves that pull-up mid-range jumper as well. And hopefully Grace O'Neill next time down can understand scouting report. You want to close out short, allow her to take that outside shot. Shot clock winding down. O'Neill had it knocked away, and it's stolen by Latson. Tough shot. Good defense, she forced a difficult shot for Grace O'Neill. Latson, no good, but a blocking foul will be called on Grace O'Neill. Certainly a tough assignment for any Dragon to defend Tania Latson. Exactly, and when you play against teams like Florida State, everyone has a tough matchup today, so everyone individually needs to do their job and guard the girl in front of you, keep her in front. Lane McGurk, the freshman from Westchester, into the game for the first time. Also, Brooke Mullen taking the seat. So for the Dragons, it'll be LeClaire, Baker, McGurk, Hodges, and Valentine. Watson will have one more, missing the first. She's got the second. Latson, a pretty good free throw shooter as well at 87% on the year. And all of a sudden, she's had the last five for Florida State. Yeah, you don't want to let her get going if you're the Dragons. Hodges. McGurk. Baker on the wing. McGurk inside Valentine. Seven to shoot. Valentine off the glass, couldn't get it to go. Baker knocks it away, but it goes out of bounds. Wow, that almost had a chance. Yeah not, necessarily, yeah, not necessarily Valentine's shot, but again, you have to like the aggressiveness of all the Dragons offensively. Oh, what a move. Gordon, right to the cup. Yeah, she's using her quickness today, and it's, it's obvious. She's able to get downhill, control herself, and finish. One point game now. Florida State has made their last three shots. McGurk. Hodges. Tried to hit McGurk back door, but it was a little bit behind her. Florida State with a chance to take the lead. Gordon, the hesitation, has to pull it back out. And Latson drives off the glass, and the Seminoles red hot right now as they're back in front by one. Yeah, Jack has to stop the bleeding there. We saw the same mistake by McGurk, just lunging at her. You want to close out short. Just about one minute to go here in the first quarter. Hodges, inside, turnaround, step through. A little bit off balance and a rebound by Turnage. And now here comes Florida State, running it down the floor the way they want to. But Drexel does get back. Kick out. The drive through the lane and it's good for Amaya Bonner. And it's a 9-0 run for Florida State. Drexel had a six point lead. And now the Seminoles coming on strong. Yeah, and we see the Dragons just getting beat off the dribble. They haven't really forced Florida State to shoot from the outside. LeClaire. Around a screen. Little pick and roll, Valentine lost it, bodies on the floor. Hodges rips it away, but then throws it right to Latson. 
foul in the backcourt on McGurk. Not the worst thing, Yeah, though. that's actually a good foul for McGurk there. Yeah, Drexel does have a couple of fouls to give. So with 5.9 seconds to go here in the first, Florida State will have one final crack at this. Yeah, without that foul, could have been an easy two points for the Seminoles. Gordon. Step back over Satman. And that'll do it. So the Dragons, a solid first quarter, but a 9-0 run by the Seminoles to close out the frame gives them a three-point lead. Momo LeClaire got it going on, though, with some points off the bench. You're watching Drexel Basketball from Learfield here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Still aren't using giant. Rothman Orthopedics, the official team physicians of your Dragons, the Phillies and Eagles, provides the region with unmatched orthopedic care. Welcome back to the DAC, and as we welcome you back, we'll send it on down in one moment to the third member of our broadcast team, Tessa Peloso. Yeah, guys, a solid first quarter for Drexel. They really are doing this nothing-to-lose mentality. The question is here, how does Drexel bounce back, and how do they slow down FSU? Start of the second quarter, and Drexel with the ball. Brooke Mullen, open three. LeClaire fighting for the rebound, and she comes down with it. Great hustle by him. Momo there, good shot by Brooke. That's the look they wanted out of the timeout. Good ball movement, but Florida State closing up those passing lanes. Satman in the corner, a little bit short. And here come the Seminoles on the run. Gordon, oh, her pocket is picked, and it will be Drexel ball. Nice job by Grace O'Neill. Great job by Grace O'Neill. Heads up play, she saw that she was trailing, able to Get a little swipe in there and get her team the ball back. And a little too much on the hand check from Sarah Bajetti. So touch foul. Always a little frustrating one. If you're the Dragons, you'll take it. O'Neill over to Satman. Mullen, another three. And a little bit too strong 
And then a foul, that'll be probably on O'Neal, trying to get the rebound away from Timpson. And for O'Neal, that will be number two. Yeah, she's gotta come out here. Amaris Baker will check back in. But you know, that's the good thing about this year's team is you have a lot of interchangeable parts. And with Momo LeClaire coming on strong, you know you have a good point guard when Grace O'Neill has to come out of the game. Absolutely. Such a nice feeling when you can go to your backup. That's a great move by Bajetti because Satman came over to help, and then Bajetti just dropped it off to Timpson. Yeah, beautiful dump off on that baseline drive. I think we'll see a little bit more of that if they keep their height in. Drexel needs a bucket, has to stop the bleeding. It's an 11-0 run for Florida State. Satman left open. A little bit too strong, and Timpson skying for the rebound. So Drexel's getting good looks. They're executing. They just need the ball to go in the basket. No bucket, says the official. The foul before the shot. It's on LeClaire. Valentine will come back in for Drexel. She'll come in for Satman. And Tanaya Latson will come in for Amaya Bonner for Florida State. Turnage all the way out to Gordon. Gordon, what a drive. Almost got it to go in the rebound by Amaris Baker. And a good no call there by the official. Jazz took a little bit of contact, but not enough. LeClaire, turnaround. Too strong. Valentine had it, lost it. Florida State saved it. And we're going to have a foul on Amaris Baker. And right now, you know, the Dragons were shooting very efficiently in that first quarter, but they have gone so cold here over the last maybe five or so minutes of gameplay. They really have, and they're staying aggressive. They're getting the right shots, but somebody's got to find a way to put that ball through the basket. Yeah, Drexel 0 for 5 here in the second quarter. Timpson got around Valentine and put it up and over. Chloe Hodges and Michaela Timpson at 6-2, certainly with the size advantage today here in Philly. Exactly, and that's what's going to happen if Drexel decides to front the post or go for that quick steal. Seminoles are going to make you pay. Make it 13 in a row for Florida State, and that was a forced pass. Here comes Latson. Hesitation through traffic, and the foul is called. And that's on Mullen, and that'll send Latson back to the line. And I'm wondering when a potential timeout is coming here for Amy Mallon because right now the Drexel Dragons just not able to get anything going offensively. Exactly, and honestly, it's translating to the defensive side of the floor. They're not really in sync as a unit out there. Nobody's really talking, and the rotations are just a little bit off, so you need your defense to spark your offense in games like this. Latson makes the free throw. She's been here quite a bit so far today. Four for five, make it five for six. 15 in a row for Florida State, but because Drexel had such a good start, you're still only down single digits. Exactly, they had a great first quarter. But they need a bucket in a big way. Valentine, hand off Mullen. Mullen, nowhere to go, good defense by Latson. 10 to shoot for Drexel. Hodges, pull up, jumper, too strong. One and done as Timpson grabs the miss. Yeah, good point there. I mean, we haven't even seen Drexel continue to crash the boards like they did in the first quarter. Gordon, can't get the roll. I feel like if Drexel can reel off one, two, maybe even three straight scores, That'll get this crowd back into it as well. Definitely. Valentine left open. She'll take it and make it. Great shot by Jasmine Valentine there. And you know, that's something we've seen her do this year. Little 15 footer, she's able to knock it down. Yeah, you can see Florida State is giving Valentine and Satman plenty of room. So it's up to them to take and make those shots. Yeah, and in a game like this, they're gonna have to make them. They absolutely have to make them to keep the defense honest. And Latson taking that shot just inside the three-point arc. That's where you want her to shoot if you're Drexel. Yeah, Coach Mallon, I'm sure, at the end of the first quarter said, start closing out short, give her the jump shot. Drexel with a chance for a two for one to get right back into this game. Valentine from the other wing. No good and the rebound to Alexis Tucker. 
Good shot, though. We've seen Jazz be able to hit a couple in a row. She's like a streaky type of shooter. Tucker, baseline. And Hodges called for the block, just could not quite get to the stop in time. So that is already the fifth team foul for the Drexel Dragons. And that puts Florida State in the bonus. And Alexis Tucker, 5'11", grad student from Long Beach, California, to the line. Grace O'Neill is going to come back into the game for Momo LeClaire. Also, Satman in for Mullen. So a little bit of a bigger lineup for Amy Mallon and Drexel with Satman and Valentine in the game at the same time. Exactly. And at the same time, Grace O'Neill, we know she's a smart player, but she really has to be smart. Sometimes she's going after those loose balls and getting tangled up. She has to be smart. They need her on the floor. Carla Viegas back into the game as well for Florida State. As well as Sakaya White. So one of two for Tucker. Tucker the transfer from UC Santa Barbara. Eight point game, Dragons still in it even though they have really gone cold shooting the basketball. Yeah, it does not feel like it's an eight point game right now but you look up at that score, they're still in this one. Baker to Valentine. Good pump fake. Off the glass, can't get the roll. Satman grabs the miss. Fresh 20 for Drexel. Good hustle there by Satman. Able to keep it alive for her team. Certainly a benefit of having a bigger lineup for Drexel. Under 10 to shoot, O'Neal. Hodges, the volleyball pass outside. Now O'Neal for three. No good, rebound pulled down by White. By the way, still no three-pointers made in this game at all. At by, all, for either team. either team. Yeah. Latson got the foul call. Yeah, we noticed with these seminal guards, they are shifty. They, they're able to get downhill. They're quick. So every single time they get past the Drexel guards, they're either getting fouled or scoring. Well, a slow start for Drexel here in the second, but Jasmine Valentine broke the ice. You're watching Drexel basketball from near field. Sign and Design, proud partner and preferred signage supplier of Drexel Athletics. Great shot of the Market Street Bridge down here in Center City, Philadelphia, alongside Maggie McIntyre, Amari Bluestein, and Florida State with an eight point lead over Drexel, 26 to 18. And you know, if we were at the midway point of the second quarter and you told me Florida State would be up eight, I'd say, okay, Drexel's in the game, but because of that great start by the Dragons, 
you know, it's tough to watch this offense now. They've really struggled. What have you seen from Drexel offensively? Is it just missing shots at this point? I, I think so. I think they're either rushing it. They're, they're getting the looks they want. Everyone's nailing their screens. They're getting these opportunities. They just need to execute. Latson one of two with the line. She's now in double figures with 10. And I think once Latson got going, Florida State got going a little bit. Exactly. Sometimes you would expect Drexel to have a slow start, and they had that amazing start, which you already mentioned. So now they understand they can play with this team. Baker, a little bit too strong, tried to go around the shot blocker. And here comes Florida State back the other way as the Dragons still have only scored two points in the last about eight minutes of gameplay, and a traveling violation is called on Sarah Bajetti. Yeah, a little travel there. Wasn't able to control her feet on that jump stop. But a good, strong take. Yeah, Bajetti, another one of these transfers for Florida State, came in from Arizona State, originally from Finland. Uh, played at Arizona State in the 1920 season, which she's been at Florida State for a couple of years. She had her best game against UCLA. She had 19 points, really shot the ball well. Wow, that's a great game. Drexel looking for some answers. Florida State, they went to a zoom, forcing Drexel to continue to shoot from the outside. Satman will take it. Bang! <laughs> well, that'll work. Shoot her way out of it. Well, we've seen Satman and Valentine, the two pigs for the Dragons, make the only outside shots <laughs> of this second quarter. Latson a little bit short-armed. And how about Sakaya White just took it away from head of Satman. Flying in there. Great extra effort. The Jetty tried to drop it off. Good help defense from Chloe Hodges. Yeah, and we see on that time, Hodges still a little late, but she was able to get to the ball in time. Past couple of possessions we've seen, Florida State able to dump that ball off really smoothly. Well, that's the first three of the game from Hedda Satman. <laughs> first three of the season for Hedda as well. Good defense inside. Well, it was at a great time. The Dragons needed it. Absolutely. And Florida State right back into man. She did her job. And that was only the fifth three of her career, by the way, for Hedda. Wow. LeClaire the drive. She'll try it again. Short. That would have brought the house down. <laughs> Heat check. There comes Latson. All the way in, good block by Mullen. Great straight up defense on Latson. Great job by Brooke Mullen. She knew exactly what to do there, straight up. Dragon still hanging around, only down by six. Florida State number 22 in the country. Hedda has a little mismatch here with her size. Shot clock is winding down, Valentine puts on the brakes. Can't get the roll, rebound tip to Mullen, block from behind, puts it up again, and she was fouled. Great hustle by Valentine and Mullen inside. Yeah, great job by Valentine, able to recognize she had that whole left side of the paint, took it in hard, jump stop, she did everything right, just couldn't get the roll, and Brooke Mullen to be able, there and follow, to be able to be there and follow her teammate, she earned that one. Wholesale changes for Florida State, getting a few starters back into the game, including Omaria Gordon. First free throw attempts of the day for the Dragons and Brooke Mullen gets it to go. Mullen, 75% on the year coming into today. She's averaging 12 points per game. That was her first point of the day. Hopefully this gets her going a little bit here for the Dragons. Yep, she's 0 for 5 to start the game. Good defense leads to better offense. Amaya Bonner also back into the game. Here's Alexis Tucker and That'll be a tripping foul on Valentine. Just an unfortunate play right there with Valentine coming out and just getting her leg caught up with Alexis Tucker. And that will send Tucker to the line with Drexel over the limit. Yeah, and this is where Drexel shot himself in the foot a little bit. In this second quarter, picking up a lot of fouls early, sending the Seminoles to the line. Alexis Tucker, one of two from the line today. First one is good. Two for two for Tucker. Florida State actually no field goals in the last five and a half minutes. Well, credit to the Dragons. I mean, Florida State, they put up a lot of points in every single game. So to have them at 29 with two and a half left in the first half, I mean, 
They're doing a good job. Yep, the Seminoles average 84 points per game. That's tied for 21st in the country. Mullen from Penn couldn't get it to go. Hand down, she's gonna shoot it. LeClaire. Mullen hits Valentine. Around Bajetti, tried to drop it off for Satman, but a good play by Bonner. Florida State on the run. Bonner, the kick out. It's a Gordon three. Got it. First three of the day for Florida State. And defense leading to offense, and it's back to a nine point game. Yeah, and you knew that one was going in. I mean, Gordon, she's just way too good to leave wide open in the corner like that. Nine points for Gordon. She averages 14 a game. LeClaire. Mullen to Hodges. Tried to drop it off, but once again, another steal. This time by Timpson. Gordon goes in. Too strong, good defense by Mullen. Yeah, Brooke Mullen, she's really showing her basketball IQ here in transition, just able to avoid these fouls and play straight up defense. Drexel slowing it down. They could use a bucket or two to finish this first half. Mullen traveled, maybe trying to force the issue a little bit with was, the shot clock winding down. I was just going to say, just doing a little bit too much there. Brooke, she needs to stay with what she does really well, squaring up, taking her time. Halftime feature coming up. We'll take a look into Drexel Sports Medicine, so don't go anywhere. That'll be at halftime. Bajetti the drive right to the cup. Again, we see these guards getting inside and just able to finish. Credit to the Seminoles. First double digit lead of the game for either team. We've got about an 11 second difference here between the game clock and shot clock. Good hesitation, Valentine, but couldn't finish. Shot clock is off and Florida State will hold for one. You saw one finger going up in the air from second year head coach, Brooke Wyckoff. Gordon avoids the trap. And now we're gonna have a foul, no shot. As Bajetti hit the deck, they will get Valentine. That'll be her second. That's going to send Bajetti to the line. You're right, Maggie. I mean, Florida State, they've been living at the line here in the second quarter, and it's a lot of a lot of the reason is because of those early fouls on Drexel. Yeah, those early just tic-tac fouls, and I mean, I know that last play is it's hard for Jazz there. Fighting through a screen, she's trying to contest a shot, knocks the girl over. But it's coming back to bite them here in the last five minutes. So Valentine comes out, Lane McGurk coming in. Little extra offense for potentially this last possession. The Jetty makes the free throw. She's only missed two free throws out of 25 attempts this year. Over 92% now. Thirteen point advantage for Florida State. Let's see if the Dragons can get one final shot. LeClaire to McGurk from half court. Had the distance but was a little bit off target <laughs> and that'll do it for the first half. And it was a great start for Drexel but Florida State really took over. They turned defense into offense, started to get, to get into their game and also Latson came to life a little bit and the Seminoles really did what they wanted at the end of the first and into the second quarter. Yeah, they took advantage of Drexel just fouling. I mean, they were able to get to the free throw line, get downhill and they made them pay. So Drexel down 13, they led by as many as six and then first quarter and we'll see if they can make some adjustments and before we go to break we'll send it on down in a moment to the third member of our broadcast team Tessa Peloso who is joined by assistant coach for Drexel Bell Coclanis and we'll wait till we get set up down there on the baseline looks like we're just about ready all right let's send it on down to tell Tessa she's joined by coach Coclanis Tessa Coach, what kind of defensive adjustments does your team need to make in the second half? We have to stop fouling. We want that whistle to stop blowing. They're a dribble drive team, very athletic, fast downhill to the rim. And right now we have uh, too many players with two fouls apiece. So second half, excited to regroup in the, in the locker room, but we need to stop fouling. 
What do you like from your team, what they've shown in this first half? Our first quarter was great. We were executing, um, you know, on the same page offensively, sharing the basketball, a little inside and out. And then second quarter, of course, it's a chess match, right? Adjustments are going to be made. We, we need to make the most of each possession. We need positive possessions um, on the offensive end. And so, but I, I love our team. They work hard. We're not going away. We're going to make adjustments at halftime. We're going to come back out, and we're going to give that drag an effort. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. And Tessa will take a timeout. When we come back, we will recap the first half. Drexel trailing by 13 over Florida State, 36 to 23. You're watching Drexel basketball from Learfield here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. goal is to have healthy athletes here. The people in our, in our sports medicine department really, you know, act as the point person, the point people to get, you know, our kids, our athletes to the right, you know, the right resources for them to, to be successful and for them to be healthy. Sports medicine is kind of a broad term. It encompasses uh, injury prevention, treatment, uh, rehabilitation, uh, of the athlete. Illness is included in there. The sports performance team itself is sports medicine, which includes athletic trainers and team doctors, um, sports nutrition, which is our registered dietitian that specializes in sports medicine, strength and conditioning, and physical therapy. Um, all of us work together to treat the whole athlete. It's a team effort. Drexel is truly a collaborative environment, especially between the sports performance staff. We really work all together because we have the same goal in mind, and that's to keep our student athletes doing what they love, and that's playing their sport. The last 10 years, or when this, when this evolution has changed, has um, made experts in different fields, of, you know, be able to exercise their, you know, their knowledge and share it, um, rather than certain individuals having to know every different area of, of sport performance. So having that kind of in, in one area or one um, under one leadership um, allows a more cohesive conversation. And they do an amazing job talking with the coaches, whether that's preventing injuries, strengthening the, the, the athletes, 
picking up on peak time, non-peak time, which is off season, on season. And we're really trying to be ahead of it now. We're not trying to be reactive. We're trying to be proactive. So we're not really running into uh, you know, injuries and they do a good job minimizing and managing uh, this area. Back in the day, it was like, you know, rub some dirt on it and maybe tape an ankle and, and take an aspirin and, you know, see me, see me tomorrow if you have to. Um, you know, everything's evolved. Um, obviously, sports medicine's evolved. The sports medicine department here, you know, since I first got here has evolved in, in a really good way. It's been a slow simmer to a sprint uh, when it comes to development of sports medicine. It's, you know, been the basic ice, rest, uh, elevation, that old concepts. Uh, of maybe the 60s and 70s. And now we're into the 2020s uh, where we're talking about recovery. There are so many more tools that we can utilize uh, at our disposal. Our goal is to get the athlete back on the field as quickly and as healthy as possible uh, without, pre you know, without putting them more in injury's way. As athletic trainers, we spend time with our athletes before practice. We spend time with them after practice. We travel with them, we're on the road with them. And within that time period, we end up building relationships because we see them at their lows, we see them at their highs, and we work with them on a daily basis throughout it. Get to know the person, not just the athlete. One of the best things we you know, experience is when our student athletes leave and they come back and they come in and you see them, they're succeeding in life, they're succeeding in jobs, they're succeeding in relationships, and it's great to see. And those bonds last for a long time. I think all of us want the kids to be healthy. Um, and, you know, sometimes you want them to be, you know, healthy of, of mind and body. Um, and sometimes, obviously, you want them to be healthy so that you can get them on the field. And, and again, I, I feel like that whole department does that for, for, our, for all the, the student athletes here. At the heart of it, all these student athletes are people first. They come from varied backgrounds, they come from different places. We need to meet them where they're at, uh, be a person with them, recognize them as an individual, uh, and, and grow that relationship and help them to grow so that they have a good time while they're here. I think the most rewarding part is, is when that athlete gets injured, they're at the lowest of lows. Part of their identity is, is wrapped up in being a Division I athlete and now it's taken away from them. And then once we get through that rehabilitation process, they build the strength, they get better, they get active. And knowing that we went through that together, uh, that I was a small part of that, but it took the determination and the grit of that athlete to, to fight through the injury, uh, to get better both physically, mentally, uh, and, and persevere through that experience. And then I get to see them go do what they came here to do. Uh, that's what's rewarding for me, to, to see the smiles on their faces, to see the excitement, uh, the way they go about their day after, a, after an injury, I think that's probably uh, the biggest reward for me uh, in my job. This is my favorite part of the holidays. Oh, and this. Even when it's unexpected, Wait, favorite, sibling rivalry and all. You know, as long as we're together, it's all my favorite. Save on our brand green beans and Brussels sprouts, four eighty-eight dollars each with digital coupon. At Independence Blue Cross, we're driven by a commitment to do good. We're a friendly helping hand on your journey. We're an advocate, connecting you to the strongest network of doctors and hospitals in the region with health coaches available 24-7. We're a partner, helping you tap into all the possibilities ahead. It's a privilege to help you pursue your healthiest life, one we've embraced for over 80 years. And we're not going anywhere. In the world of athletes, where every move counts, setbacks can feel like a mountain to climb. At Rothman Orthopedics, our team of top-notch orthopedic experts are here to get you back to doing what you love, because we specialize in you. We're not just about recovery, we're about rewriting your story. With specialized physicians and unwavering support, we help you rise above adversity. Rothman Orthopedics, the official orthopedic provider of athletes. When you vacation in Montgomery County, PA, your money worries get a vacation too. Oh, you gotta get your value. Feel free to explore the soldier's huts. Free? <laughs> Four bucks, that's it? Keep the lettuce coming, Diane. <laughs>
Parking is free! Hey, it's free! With so many affordable things in Montgomery County, go ahead. Freak out! <laughs> Welcome back here to Philadelphia. Beautiful shot of the Ben Franklin Bridge here in the city of brotherly love. We're here at the half and the number 22 ranked Florida State Seminoles lead the Drexel Dragons 36 to 23. And as we take a look at your halftime stats and you can see the difference really is in the field goal shooting. Florida State 12 for 25. They've been to the free throw line 14 times. Drexel 10 for 36, including two for 17 in that second quarter. Absolutely. Drexel, they need to continue to attack and get to that free throw line. Clock stops and it's free points. They need to get there. Well, now it's time for our halftime adjustments presented by Rothman Orthopedics. Rothman Orthopedics, the official team physicians of your Dragons, the Phillies and Eagles, providing the region with unmatched orthopedic care. So you just kind of said the Dragons need to get to the free throw line. Anything else you think the Dragons needs, need to do to get back into this game? On the flip side, limit their own fouls. I mean, they're just fouling a couple tic-tac calls, but they got to play through it and get, find a way to get in a rhythm. When you foul, your offense can't get flowing. And for Florida State, anything that you think the Seminoles are going to look to improve upon coming up here in the second half? I think they just have to keep being aggressive and get downhill. Every time they get a foot in the paint or they work the ball inside out, they are successful. Well, we will take one final time out here as the teams get set to get ready for the third quarter. Florida State up by 13 over the Drexel Dragons. We'll be back with third quarter action. You're watching Drexel Basketball from Learfield here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. The Varsity Network is the new home of Drexel Basketball live audio broadcasts. Download the free app available for both Apple and Android and listen to your Dragons all season long in the palm of your hand. Beautiful day along the Delaware River here in Philadelphia. Alongside Maggie McIntyre, I'm Ari Bluestein. Thank you for joining us here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. And it's been kind of an up and down game where the Dragons really started well. They got out to a six point lead, but Florida State turned it on. A 15-0 run from the first to the second quarter really turned the tide in this one. Absolutely, it's been a game of runs and if you're Drexel, these first five minutes are crucial. You need to come out, get stops, get scores, and then get another stop. It's yeah, very the, important. Yeah, the third quarter has been somewhat of an issue for the Dragons uh, against Lehigh. 
really Lehigh took over in that third quarter. We saw Buffalo make their run in, their, in the third quarter to make things close. So Amy Mallon, there she is, the head coach for Drexel. It's gonna be up to her and the Dragons to really kind of stop the bleeding here because Florida State is in the midst of a 9-0 run and also get things going offensively. Yeah, and hopefully that was their lull for the game in that back half of the second quarter. It's actually going to be Drexel Ball to start the third quarter instead of Florida State. There's second year head coach Brooke Wyckoff for the Florida State Seminoles. Played at Florida State from 1997 to 2001. She was an assistant in 2011, was an associate head coach in 2018, and then an official head coach in 2022. So she is a Seminole through and through. <laughs> She's done a great job at this program over the years, that's for sure. And a turnover for Drexel on their first possession. Not exactly what you wanted to do if you were Drexel as Hodges was looking back door. Yeah, little miscommunication. Not how you want to start this second half, but let's see if they can bounce back and get a stop. Omaria Gordon, who had nine points in the first half. Timpson, nice move, and dumps it in from three feet away. Yeah, nice move. We haven't seen that out of her yet. Clearly she's able to do it. A little shifty there. Michaela Timpson averaging, averaging 12 and a half and nine and a half rebounds per game. She's got eight and five on the day. Perfect four for four shooting from the floor. Mullen, and she and the Dragons needed that triple. Big shot by Brooke Mullen, and you see the difference there. She was able to set her feet, little catch shoot, right in rhythm, good start. First field goal for Mullen, she now has five. Latson, Satman altered the shot and grabbed the miss. Perfect defense by Hedda Satman. Able to use her height to her advantage and get that block. Now the Dragons looking to cut into this deficit a little bit more. O'Neal, Mullen will try it, top of the key, bang! There you go, back to back for Brooke Mullen. Great shot, it's what the Dragons needed. Now it's under 10, and this is exactly what Drexel needed to start the third quarter. Tucker trying for the answer, too strong, and O'Neal grabs the long rebound. Great defense by the Dragons, force a tough shot, long rebound, those are usually difficult on the weak side. Grace O'Neal able to secure it. O'Neal with the jetty all over her. So Mullen will run the point. Hand check, foul called on Latson. Unfortunately, the officials, they do have to call that. You're only allowed to touch once. Second time you touch, automatic foul. Kevin Sparrick, Timothy Bryant, Ashley Gloss, the veteran officiating crew for today's game. Mullen over to O'Neal. Back to Mullen, another one. That one is off the mark, but Baker grabs the offensive rebound. Beautiful look there. Oh, and Mullen had her pass deflected. Latson going in, and a blocking foul is called on Mullen, and she seem, seems to think Latson just fell down. Yeah, I would love to see that again. There we go, let's see it. Yeah, a little bump. A little not bump, a, their feet got tied up a little yeah, bit, right? Not a lot of contact, but it was enough of a bump to warrant the foul call. Brooke Mullen, her second personal, not a shooting foul. Yeah, it was on the floor. A little stoppage here. Here we go, Florida State with the inbound. Gordon, good hesitation. And she draws the foul. Again, just using her quickness to get past her first defender, then her second defender, and draw a foul. She is shifty. A pretty good straight up D from Satman, but got her with the body a little bit. And Amaria Gordon to the line, first time today. And she makes the first Gordon 69% from the line on the year. Second one is good. Florida State certainly has lived at the line today 
13 for 16 from the charity strike. And that's what you're going to see out of these good teams. I mean, they find ways to get to the free throw line. So back to a double digit lead for the Seminoles. The Jetty went for the steal. O'Neill gets around her and she hits the jumper. Great job by Grace O'Neill making her pay. O'Neill now with six points, back to a nine point lead for Florida State. Gordon, Latson, puts on the brakes, step back, jumper, no good. Floorboard grabbed by Mullen. Again, great shot, nice move, little step back. Good defense by the Dragons. And again, if you're Drexel, you want Latson taking the outside shot rather Absolutely. than getting into the paint. O'Neal finds Satman. She'll take the long two. Fight for the rebound, and coming down with it is Gordon. She's on the run, dropping it off. Timpson puts it in over Satman. Good push by the Seminoles. I mean, Drexel has to do a little bit better job on those long rebounds. Long shots mean long rebounds, right? So that gives the Seminoles an opportunity to set up right into their fast break. And again, that's what Florida State likes to do. They want to get out and run and score in transition. Mullen, back to O'Neal. She'll try a three. Rattles oh. out. Rebound knocked out of bounds. They say off of Hodges, but the officials may talk this over. And it will oh, wow. stay as Florida State ball. Wow. Good shot by Grace O'Neill, though. That's the shot she has to take. She's wide open. They set her up on that flare screen. The Drexel three for 11 from downtown. Florida State one for six. Momo LeClaire, Jasmine Valentine back in for Drexel. Gordon, nowhere to go. Good defense by Valentine. Sakaya White back in for Florida State, and now we are going to have a foul on Drexel. This will be on Amaris Baker for the hand check. That'll be her third, team's third here in the third quarter. Yeah, good move by Latson just to reject the screen, go downhill, and force Baker to pick up her third foul. Snoop Turnage back into the game for Florida State. Brooke Mullen back in after a brief break. Baker has to come out with her third personal. Gordon, pull up, jumper, around the rim and out, rebound by Brooke Mullen, her fifth of the game. Yeah, and again, we're seeing the Dragons have success when they force the Seminoles to shoot from the outside. Florida State with 26 points in the bank and 13 at the line. That is where they have lived for sure. And now an offensive foul moving screen will be called on Chloe Hodges. Tough little stretch here for the Dragons. It seems like they can't really get a call to go their way. They got to fight through it. They got to come together as a unit. Yeah, Drexel already now with four team fouls. So the next foul will put Florida State in the bonus. The Jetty, the drive, and there it is, another foul. They count the bucket. Wow, great drive. Able to tuck the basketball, embrace the contact, and finish. You get the foul on Mullen. It'll be her third. Tough shot by Bajetti. Sarah Bajetti, who averages 11 a game, only with six today, and make it seven. And all of a sudden, Drexel got to within nine. It looked like they were going to have a little bit of a run, and Florida State gets it back up to 14 here. Yeah, and it's like you mentioned, they're just consistent with getting to the free throw line. So Mullen to the bench with three. So the top two scorers for Drexel, Mullen and Baker, both on the bench with three personal fouls. Coach Mallon has to go to her bench. Let's see how they respond. Lane McGurk, who's certainly capable of scoring in bunches, she's into the game. Hodges, step through. Got the foul call, couldn't get it to go, but she'll go to the line for two when we return. So Florida State up 14. Drexel has started well here in the third. But Florida State back to a double-digit lead. Brooke Mullen with a couple of threes here in the third quarter. You're watching Drexel basketball from Learfield here on NBC Sports Philadelphia.
Canaan's Blue Cross. We believe in doing more when it matters most. Welcome back to the DAC. You see the two huddles talking things over midway through the third quarter alongside Maggie McIntyre. I'm Ari Bluestein, Tessa Peloso on the sidelines and 4.46 to play here in the third. Drexel down by 14 to the 22nd ranked Florida State Seminoles. And we've seen some better moments from the Dragons here in the third, but every time they've gotten a little bit closer, We've seen, it seemed like Florida State has found an answer or two the other way. Exactly, and Chloe Hodges, she did her job on that last play before the break. She was able to split the defense, go in with her little Euro step that she likes to do, and get to the free throw line. Clock has stopped, and she's getting points here. Hodges made the first, got the second. Only the third and fourth free throws for the Dragons today. Florida State has attempted 17 and made 14. Latson, count it, and the foul. Why, I mean, wide open layup, great play. Great play design for Florida State. Got their best player going downhill, wide open. Latson, that is what she does. And, you know, she hasn't shot the ball extremely well today. She's three for 10, but has 12 points and now 13. And just such a great scorer. I mean, Florida State, Really looked good last year when you had her as a freshman uh, and you had uh, Philadelphia native Taylor O'Brien as a grads transfer. And then Latson misses the end of the year and Florida State loses in the first round of the ACC tournament and then loses in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Right, she's like the motor for their team and especially on offense. I mean, the ball has to flow through her. They're in good shape. LeClaire, the reverse, couldn't get enough on it. Rebound by Turnage. Tough shot by LeClaire. Gordon, too strong, Valentine skies for the rebound. And good job by Grace O'Neill there, not fouling. McGurk, the drive and the block by Amaya Bonner. Good take by McGurk, not afraid as a freshman going up against Florida State. Yeah, maybe she's a player that, you know, Drexel can get her going, she can score in bunches. Fun to watch. Here she is. Can't get the roll though. Good look off the inbound pass. Yeah, she'll want that one back. Just overall been a tough shooting night for the Dragons. Overall at 29%. Bonner. Valentine grabs it after the miss. Yeah, that's the same exact look. Florida State running back to back. The plays, same exact thing. Different players trying to exploit these mismatches. They've got about three and a half minutes here till the end of the third. If Drexel can find a way to cut it back to single digits, that'll certainly give them a chance in the fourth. And the thing is, they're doing what they, they're being successful on defense, right? They want to hold them 
under their point average, but Drexel needs to score on the flip side of that. Fouls on Florida State there on the screen. I believe, yeah, they got Bonner on that one. Third team foul for Florida State. LeClaire. And now a moving screen call against Grace O'Neill. That'll be her third. Tough, she's gotta continue. Be smart. Drexel now over the limit. Of course, no shots on an offensive foul. And here's a three from the corner, no good by Carla Viegas. Valentine. Hits McGurk underneath. Wow, what a block by Bonner coming over from the weak side. Yeah, Bonner late on that one, but able to use her length. Latson, the pull-up runner. 15 for Tanaya Latson. Yeah, and she's really just so smooth. The way she's able to jump stop, use her body, and elevate. And Amy Mallon calling a timeout with two and a half to play in the third. Drexel down 17, and then it's somewhat of a pivotal moment here for the Dragons to try and stay in this game. You're watching Drexel basketball from Learfield here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. At Independence Blue Cross, we believe in doing more when it matters most. When you need a hand, we've got online tools that connect you to the strongest network of doctors and hospitals in the region. When you need a boost, we keep you going with health discounts and reimbursements. And when you need an adventure, we give you the confidence to live fully. It's a privilege to help you pursue your healthiest life and all the possibilities ahead. In the world of athletes, where every move counts, setbacks can feel like a mountain to climb. At Rothman Orthopedics, our team of top-notch orthopedic experts are here to get you back to doing what you love, because we specialize in you. We're not just about recovery, we're about rewriting your story. With specialized physicians and unwavering support, we help you rise above adversity. Rothman Orthopedics, the official orthopedic provider of athletes. When you vacation in Montgomery County, PA, your money worries get a vacation too. Oh, you gotta get your value. Feel free to explore the soldiers' huts. Free? <laughs> Four bucks, that's it? Keep the lettuce coming, Diane. <laughs> Parking is free! Hey, it's free! With so many affordable things in Montgomery County, go ahead, freak out. This season, when the Dragons score, you score. Each home game with 70 or more points means Drexel fans get a free Shack Burger with proof of ticket and a minimum $1 purchase. Welcome back to Philadelphia on the campus of Drexel University, Florida State, up 50 to 33 and right out of the timeout, Mullen a deep three that can't connect in the rebound by Sakaya White. I'm not sure if that's what Drexel drew up, but she was open. Yeah, Mullen two for 10 shooting the basketball today. And just overall, that's been the story. Drexel 28% shooting, Florida State 46% shooting. Bonner couldn't hit that one, but Mullen could not grab the miss. Fresh 20 for the Seminoles. Drexel, they needed to secure that basketball. Latson. White. A little bit of a dribble handoff there. Now into the corner, Viegas puts up the three. 
hits it as the shot clock expires. Wow, that was a great shot. Defender right in her face. That is a backbreaker if you're Drexel. It's now a 20 point game. Amaris Baker, who's been quiet since that opening quarter. Leclerc to Mullen. Five to shoot. Someone's gonna have to put it up or not. Turnover, Drexel the steal for Florida State. Latson on the run, look out. Just too easy, I mean, the Dragons, you have to understand, Florida State, they have some size, especially in this unit right here on the floor. A cross court, skip pass, it's not gonna make it there. Dragons could use a bucket here to get a little bit of momentum going into the fourth. Baker. Mullen. LeClaire now. Mullen will have to put it up top of the key and drills it. There you go, big shot right there by Brooke Mullen. Gives the Dragons a little bit of life at the end of this third. Well, she struggled today, but she's now in double figures with 11. Her third three here in the third quarter. Wow, what a crossover by Tania Latson. I mean, it's just effortless for Latson. She can do whatever she wants out here. Shot clock is off. Mullen. Leclerc in the high post, Satman outside. It's a McGurk three. Bang! Great shot, great shot, Eileen McGurk. You love to see that go in for her. And I'm sure the Dragons could use a lot more of that going into the fourth quarter. First bucket for Lane McBuckets. Dragons down big as we head into the fourth quarter. You're watching Drexel basketball from their field. Sheraton University City, located blocks from campus, is a preferred hotel and proud partner of Drexel Athletics. When I caught up with Chloe Hodges this week, I asked her about this team and their progression. She said, coming into this year, we were the underdogs. I think we still are. We have a lot to prove. We have a lot of new pieces and people that have been here and stepped into new roles. It's really exciting how we play, and it is a new person stepping up every single game. You see even spreads across the boards with points, assists, and rebounds. It's fun to play in that type of system and fun to see some results from everybody. All right. Thanks so much, Tessa, and uh, we'll see who steps up here in the fourth quarter. That's for sure. Maybe it's Lane McGurk. She starts the fourth on the bench, but 
Maybe Mullen keeps it going, maybe it's Chloe Hodges, but the Dragons certainly need some help offensively as Alexis Tucker missing the bucket on the other end. Here's Momo LeClaire dips in and hits the mid-range. There you go, I was gonna say, Momo had a nice start when she came in in the first. Couple quick buckets and she's back. She's got eight points, averages six a game. Nice job off the bench. Tucker, the drive, lost the basketball. LeClaire gets the steal. Up ahead, Mullen, one-on-one -on -one with Viegas going in. And a good play by Carla Viegas. Yeah, good transi transition defense there by the Seminoles, able to get back and avoid a foul call. Let's take a look at the replay. Looked like a little bit of contact. Yeah, there, and a Maggie. little bit of body that we've seen that Drexel pick up on this end. They got to fight through it. Mullen to inbound. Having some trouble, and that's a five second call. It was close, but great job by Florida State to not allow Drexel to inbound the basketball. Yeah, good defense, and if you're Brooke Mullen, at that point you just got to throw the ball in and hopefully your team secures it. Pajetti forcing her way in. Wow, got it to go. Yeah, we see a little flex there by Pajetti, but she used, she used her strength on that drive. Big bucket for Florida State. Back to a 18-point spread. That's what it was to start this quarter. Now a foul off the ball. This will be on Florida State. It'll be a hold on Pajetti. First team foul for the Seminoles. Second personal on Bajetti. There's Drexel head coach Amy Mallon looking on. And the ball going right next to her on the bench. But it will stay with Drexel. LeClaire gets the inbound. Satman, she'll try another three. Actually, it was a long two. Couldn't connect. O'Neal grabs the rebound. <laughs> Grace O'Neal, she always seems to come out of nowhere and ends up with the loose ball. LeClaire, over to O'Neal, driving in, got the foul call, count it! And one for Grace O'Neal, falling out of bounds. She was able to finish, high arcing shot, beautiful. Grace O'Neal, one more look, what a shot from the sophomore from Archbishop Carroll. O'Neal gets the free throw. She's been spectacular from the line this year. She's now 10 of 11. It's a 15 point game. There's still time for Drexel. Plenty of time, the Dragons need to stop here. LeClaire almost came up with the steal. Tucker, the drive, blocked by Satman. LeClaire up ahead to Mullen, two on one. O'Neal throws it up, but she was off balance. Rebound by Timpson. Uh, tough play in transition. Florida State the other way. Bajetti will pull it back outside and slow it down for the Seminoles. Bajetti, the drive, challenges Satman, throws it up. And O'Neal grabs the miss. Credit to Hedda Satman here in the last couple of minutes. I mean, even ending out the third, she's played tough, straight up, smart defense. And now a foul off the ball. That's gonna be a hold on Florida State. The Dragons are cutting hard. In this quarter, you, you just see like a little bit of sense of urgency here. Brooke Mullen, both times getting called. Being able to draw that foul, I mean, that's huge. Three fouls for the Seminoles early in this quarter. Yep, and none for Drexel. LeClaire, the runner, couldn't get it to go. Bajetti. Into the lane, challenges Satman again, and this time won the battle. I mean, of all the drives she had, that looked the most difficult, but she was able to finish. 11 now for Bajetti. By the way, Timpson to the bench, White back in. Four players in double figures for Florida State. Led by Tanaya Latson with 19. O'Neal to Mullen in the post. Turn around. Can't get the roll, offensive rebound, Satman. Had it doing the dirty work here. She'll take the long two, drills it. 
Great shot. You love to see her confidence here. And timeout, Florida State with the Dragons starting to creep back into it. Down 15, still a big hill to climb, but the Dragons with the energy and making some shots here to start the fourth quarter. Hennis Satman doing it with the defense and the offense. You're watching Drexel basketball from Learfield here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. This is where everything starts. It's a place of new beginnings, new opportunities, and a new identity. We are the Coastal Athletic Association, and from the beaches to the city streets, we are united to succeed at an elite level in competition, in our communities, in our lives. This is the tide that lifts us, the fire that burns inside all of us. This is our moment, our new chapter. We are the CAA, and we are united in excellence. I think being part of the team, behind the team, knowing that there's multiple individuals that are all really focused on the same goal of keeping athletes healthy, really does make an impact in their lives. My goal is always the same, meet the athlete where they are, help them be their best selves, but also minimize their risk. When I think of the team behind the team, I really kind of consider an army in the background, right? Uh, we're kind of an unseen group of people that the end result is really the athletes on the field, on the court, performing. You can have live college sports in your hand this year with the brand new Varsity Network app. Hear live, play by play, and keep up with your favorite teams and audio broadcasts no matter where you are with this free new app. Be sure to download the Varsity Network app today. This March, you can listen to exclusive Westwood One coverage of the NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments for free on the Varsity app. Powered by Learfield. Listen to every game at a truly unique listening experience. It's all free. Search NCAA Championships. At Independence Blue Cross, we're driven by a commitment to do good. We're a friendly helping hand on your journey. We're an advocate, connecting you to the strongest network of doctors and hospitals in the region with health coaches available 24-7. We're a partner, helping you tap into all the possibilities ahead. It's a privilege to help you pursue your healthiest life, one we've embraced for over 80 years. And we're not going anywhere. Discover The Study, a sophisticated yet relaxing hotel located at the heart of University City. Learn more at thestudyatuniversity.com. Boathouse Row down here on the Schuylkill here in Center City, Philadelphia, alongside Maggie McIntyre, I'm Ari Bluestein, and 6.20 to play here in the fourth. Drexel hanging around. Ooh, and Latson nearly lost it and couldn't get it to go. White grabs the rebound, put back no good. Turnage comes down with it, and her put back is good. Third chance opportunity for the Seminoles, and they do not miss. Yeah, and they use their size there. We saw LeClaire, Grace O'Neill trying to box out down there, but it just wasn't enough. Amaris Baker back into the game, as is Jasmine Valentine. Had a Satman, a well-deserved break. LeClaire over to Valentine, now Mullen baseline. Mullen drops it off. Baker, Valentine, baby jumper too strong. LeClaire grabs the offensive rebound. There we go, we see that same fight in the Dragons on their offensive glass. Now they have not given up. Even being down big to a nationally ranked team, Drexel has not given up. Baker, shot clock winding down. Valentine, the drive, the pull up. Don't count it, traveling violation is called. Tough play there for Valentine. She probably just should have taken that jump shot. We've seen her hit it earlier in this game. Approaching the midway point here of the fourth. Florida State with the lead and the basketball. Drexel trying to trap. White inside, turnaround is good. Nice move by Sakaya White, the junior college transfer. Great move, she was able to use her shoulder, embrace that contact, high arching floater. Yeah, Jones College, White, 18 points, 13 rebounds per game. Certainly a nice addition to the depth for this Florida State team. Absolutely. O'Neal, corner, three, short, rebound to flex out to Mullen. O'Neal, 
Valentine against White. Turnaround, baby hook, short. Nice move, but couldn't get it to go. Yeah, good move. Jazz has set a tough game finishing today. Corner three is drilled for Amaya Bonner. And that puts the lead to 22, and that might put the nail in the coffin today. Exactly, the Seminoles, they just seem to always have an answer. They certainly have, and a timeout called by Amy Mallon. It's a full timeout, but we'll keep it right here with 4.08 to play in the fourth quarter. And yeah, every time we've seen the Dragons inch closer, you know, they cut it to nine a couple of times in the third, Florida State has had the answer. And look, you're a nationally ranked team exactly. with NCAA aspirations. That's what you're going to do. And you know, they're, they're following this game up with a loss to the number two ranked UCLA Bruins, as you see some Florida State fans making the trip here to Philadelphia. And you know, look, Florida State knocked off Tennessee earlier in the year. Lost a tough one to Stanford, lost to UCLA. They lost to Arkansas, but those are some good programs. They won at Florida a great win. And you know, we talked about this Florida State team. Kind of unfinished business for them last year. You had Tania Latson, who was the freshman of the year per the athletic. She misses the ACC tournament and Florida State gets upset by Wake Forest in the first round. Then they lose to Georgia. They were the number seven seed. Georgia was a 10 seed. So, you know, this Florida State team, they're trying to bounce back from a tough end to what was a really good year last year. Yeah, and this is a good game for them coming off two losses. I mean, you just want to get your flow back in and you want to just feel good about yourself moving forward, you know, right before the break coming into the new year with conference play. So this is gonna be a good bounce back game for them. See what Drexel does out of the timeout here. Drexel now has two remaining, Florida State with three remaining. And a Satman in and out on that three. She's taking it, I mean, they're leaving her wide open, that scouting report. Latson. Drive under the basket all the way outside to Gordon for three, and it's good. Omaria Gordon, the 5'4 junior guard, 14 points right on her average. I am really impressed with Gordon. I mean, she just understands when to use her quickness, when to take that outside shot. At being 5'4, it's tough being in the ACC, so credit to her. This is a guard heavy team. And Florida State really starting to pour it on now. They average 84 points a game, only 71 right now, but starting to lift that number up a little bit and a hand check foul called against Gordon. That is the fourth team foul on Florida State. And you know, this game for Drexel, such a good start, but Florida State got on that 15-0 run and Drexel just was never able to bounce back. Exactly, and you know what, Drexel, they, they played pretty solid. I mean, it's hard to, to go against teams like this, and there's such great learning opportunities, and it's all it's going to do is prepare them for conference play. Turnage for three, way off the mark, rebound by Mullen. And Drexel will have a tough tournament coming up. Ironically, down in Florida, they'll be on the West Coast at Fort Myers. Oh, that's a nice little pass. Mullen to Satman. Beautiful pick and roll action. And Satman now with seven points. That is a season high for her. She's been solid today. Now, like you said, we, we have to look at the positives out of this game. And Hedda Satman, certainly a positive. Momo LeClaire, a positive. And how about that? A good <laughs> yeah. pass by Mullen. And Gordon says, I could do that too. Yes, yeah, she can. <laughs> Now we thought before the game, if Drexel could keep this in the 60s, they would have a shot. Well, Florida State at 73 now. And the Dragons just have not been able to shoot the ball all that well. Except for Hedda Sapp. Yeah, <laughs> yep, and back to back, great pick and roll action. I like that combo there, Brooke Mullen and Hedda Sapman. Yeah, nine now for Sapman. Mullen leads the Dragons with 11. Here's Latson, who has 19 to lead the way for the Seminoles. Lost her dribble and a good job by Hodges to force the jump ball and possession arrow in favor of Drexel. Yeah, I thought Latson was maybe gonna try and get back up there. She's capable of it. So Brooke Mullen will come out probably for the remainder of the game here. Lane McGurk in. 
Florida State leaving their starters in for the most part here. O'Neal over to Hodges, poked away. O'Neal right back to Chloe Hodges. Spin move, strong take and draws the foul. Good take by Chloe, I mean she's been aggressive all day, not afraid to go downhill, throw it up there and try and get to the free throw line. Her spin move has been looking better recently. Chloe Hodges has had overall a solid season, nine and a half points, four and a half rebounds per game, 61% shooting from the floor. And 83% from the line. And you know, she had a career high 18 in the win over Marist. And she had 11 points, six rebounds, three steals <laughs> against Buffalo. Yes. You know, she's a player that's gonna be key for the Dragons once we get into conference play. Yeah, and Chloe's usually pretty efficient, so when she's on, the Dragons seem to have a lot of success. Corner three for Latson. Only her sixth triple on the year. She's got 22. Yeah, that's still a win for the Dragons. They gave her up a three-pointer to her. Credit to Latson, able to knock it down. And Hodges with a nice little spin move and got that to go. She's in double figures now with 10. I don't know what the stoppage was for, I think, to maybe reset the clock. Final minute here. The Jetty. Good straight up D from Satman and Hodges grabs her fifth rebound. Hodges will launch the three. Off the mark, McGurk skying in. It's a jump ball possession arrow in favor of Florida State, but good hustle by Lane McGurk. Great hustle by McGurk. Unfortunately, Possession not in their favor. Drexel just get a stop here. As we talked about, Drexel will have a tournament in Fort Myers, Florida at Florida Gulf Coast University. They'll have a tough FGCU team on Wednesday and then another good mid-major team in Cleveland State. And then Arcadia here at home and then it's time for conference play as Latson can't connect. White is tied up and possession arrow in favor of Drexel. But this is really some big tests. Yet, yet Buffalo, which is always a good mid-major team, nationally, nationally ranked Florida State, a tough two-game tournament in Florida, and then basically right in the conference play. So this is really going to prepare the Dragons to take on all the Coastal Athletic Association opponents. Sure, and Coach Mallon knew what she was doing with that. I mean, you use your schedule to your advantage, especially this time of year. I'd get all the kinks out. Try and learn as much as you can so that when conference play, the, the opening weekend or two game stretch of conference play is huge. I mean, that's where you send a message to the rest of the league. So if you can win your first two games or at least split, everyone knows Drexel's here to play. And for Florida State, only one more non-conference game that'll be at home against Alabama State. And then on Friday the 29th, they start ACC play with Georgia Tech and a little revenge game with Wake Forest who knocked them out of the ACC tournament last year. Hodges having trouble getting it in and Drexel will use their final timeout. Remains 19.1 seconds remaining. Yeah, this Florida State team, I mean, this is a team to watch. I mean, they lost some players. You lose Taylor O'Brien, who we talked about her. She went to Plymouth White Marsh High School. She was in the crowd today, but not too far of a trip for her. Then uh, you lose three other contributors, but when you have Tania Latson, you have Omaria Gordon and Sarah Bajetti, I mean, these are three guards. That could be one of the best trio of guards in the country. Definitely, and depending on who they're playing or what the matchups look like, I mean, any of them could go off depending on the night. Foul off the ball as Bajetti and McGurk hit the deck. They'll get Pajetti with the foul, and Lane McGurk will go to the line. Little bang, bang play there. Let's see if McGurk can put these in. Lane McGurk, who just had an absolute splash to start her career. She scored in double figures in her first four games. 
a career high 20 against LaSalle, Juan CAA Rookie of the Week. And you know, she's going to have a role for this team down the stretch. Just a capable scorer for the Dragons. Absolutely, and she said it herself. Once she feels more comfortable on the defensive end of the floor, I'm sure we'll see her minutes go up. Shot clock is off. Florida State will just dribble this one out. A good effort by the Dragons, but just too much Seminoles. And the Dragons just struggled shooting the basketball a little bit here today. Yeah, I mean, without that second quarter lull, could have seen a different game, but the Dragons will wish they had that one back. Yeah, fairly even other than that second quarter, and that is your final score. Drexel falling to number 22 ranked Florida State, 76 to 56. So Drexel, their record evens up at four and four, and Florida State improves to eight and three. Maggie, final thoughts here before we send it on down to Tessa Pelosa. Overall, great game. I think the Dragons can take a lot of learning things out of this and apply it to their conference play. All right, so for our post-game recap, let's send it on down to the third member of our broadcast team, Tessa Peloso. Tessa? I think that the toughness that this team showed is something to talk about today, especially getting into conference play right around the corner. They're going to be a dangerous team in the CAA. All right. Couldn't agree with you more, Tessa. Thank you. And big test for the Dragons. They fall in this one, but they'll have a chance to get back at it next week in the Florida Gulf Coast Tournament. So for my partner, Maggie McIntyre, Tessa Peloso on the sidelines, Amari Bluestein saying so long from the Daskalakis Athletic Center. Again, your final score, Florida State 76, Drexel 56. You've been watching Drexel Basketball from Learfield here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. This has been an exclusive presentation from Learfield. Yes, I heard you, Tessa. Yeah.